trying to do a hybrid, but using two separate systems, which normally we're able to uh, run everything through our computer. So uh, just bear with us today. Hopefully uh, things will go well. Those of you that are joining, joining us by Zoom, uh, if you could make sure that you put your name and who you're representing in the chat uh, for our records, um, that would be very much appreciated. And hopefully you guys can hear um, me. We're gonna do our best with this hybrid model and see how things work. So uh, I wanna go ahead and do a welcome this morning. Um, for those of you that are here in person, uh, if we could kind of just go down and everybody introduce themselves. I am Leisha Roy. I'm teacher on assignment for health education for the school district. I'm also the shack chair. I am, I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> Pretty much. That would be who I am. Where you wanna go? I'm Maura Minor. I'm a, I'm an ESE nurse specialist, and I am the secretary. And I love her. <laughs> uh, let's start over here. Okay, I'm Andrea Morón, and I'm I'm the extension program manager for the US ISIS Family Nutrition Program. Hi, I'm Kirk Gersey. I'm with the Lee County Health Department and Tobacco Control. Uh, I'm Adrian Archila, and I'm also with the health department. I'm Debbie Hamilton. I am the Secretary of Health Services. I help these ladies out. Oh, we love her too. We have, I can't tell you how much. For sure. I'm Kathy Ben, Prevention Specialist here at the I'm John Bailey. I'm one of the Environmental Educator uh, Resource Teachers. Uh, I am Mary Graham, and I'm a Career Technical Education Department. I'm Amy Carroll, Board Leader of Wonderful. And I would like to just let you guys know we have um, several people joining us online. Uh, Lieutenant Coco from the Cape Coral PD. Garrett, uh, and Garrett, I hope I'm not mispronouncing your last name. Is it Kaysner Keisner? Uh, he's the prevention coordinator from Hanley. Uh, Julie Kurtz is here uh, via Zoom from uh, Food and Nutrition Services. Uh, Dr. Christina Cavanaugh uh, from the FSU Family Medical Residency Program at Lee Health. And Carrie Malinowski from the Han Hanley Foundation and Yasmin Gallo from Tice Elementary. Um, if anybody else pops in, I apologize if I don't get you introduced to everyone, but we certainly are glad that you're with us. Uh, the first, I, yeah, I'm recording. Okay. I, I actually remember she has to keep me on, on my toes or I'm, yeah. Um, so the first thing we need to do is uh, approve our minutes from the September 23rd meeting. Um, I do have some corrections, very, very minimal corrections under new business school board update line let's see if i can count line three um that line says the department of education has mandated that specific items must be thought to all students in the program uh, i i vote that we strike the term the words in the program and that sentence continues items such as substance abuse prevention and suicide prevention suicide prevention needs to be replaced by human trafficking um, that was my fault that that didn't get in there correctly. So um, I would like to see if we can get someone to make a motion to accept the minutes with the changes that I just read. Okay, did you get that? Kurt. Yep, Dr. Kurt and then Andrea seconded. Uh, all in favor? Excellent, any opposed? Great, but minutes passing in here seem to be our, our most successful thing that we, uh, we, we do. Um, Mary Fisher sent me an email. Um, she is attending another meeting and, and, was, and sends her regrets. She is going to try to come in towards the end of this meeting. If she doesn't make it, she has something she wants me to share with the group. So I will do that at the end um, once we get through. So that means, uh, Kurt, from uh, 
uh, the health department with the school tobacco policy work and related trainings. Uh, he's the program manager for health education is going to present to us today. Kurt, come on up. Um, um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, he's gonna, gonna walk back and forth. you could, I would say stand over here and just speak kind of loudly so that those on Zoom. Okay, no, I don't think you moved. No, I don't, I don't think. Because we're seeing him here. I'm, I'm, yeah, there you go. You I'm can check those online. To it too, right, right. right. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, all right. Thank you, first of all, for letting me be here this morning and for all the good work that everybody in the room does. We really, truly appreciate it. Um, I just have a few items. And can you hear me okay? Is the mask mm -hmm. well? I'm doing okay. All right. Um, we, uh, we know how hard the school district works on tobacco policies. Matter of fact, I work with Kathy a lot. We seem to be in all the same meetings. You know, you get to where you're like, oh, there she is again. <laughs> I'd be upset if you weren't at a meeting I went to, actually. Uh, but we know over the years that tobacco policy has been a not an easy area, to be honest. And most of you know this vaping alone has kind of changed the landscape of trying to keep up with what policies need to be on the books for school districts and other businesses. Um, so right now, currently, throughout the state of Florida in all 67 counties, there is somebody at the health department that's been tasked with going to, out to work with the school district to do an assessment of where we are. And it's in one way, it's, it's for us to show off all the good stuff we've done. And we know that even this summer, stuff had, was happening with policy. So we're hoping to capture all that. But ultimately, it's a bird's eye view for the state to look at counties that are doing well, to where we can replicate it, but also to look at areas where policy is maybe changing. And one example of that is if you went back a few years, uh, we were probably telling uh, school districts at one point, if someone gets caught with tobacco or vaping, they should be, you know, it should be forcefully, you know, addressed. So people were being suspended from school. And really that changing, and the thinking has changed to where we're, we're, not, we're not thinking that's doing much good for anybody, for the schools not to have kind of a behind in a chair or for someone to go home and potentially smoke all day, that kind of thing. So, um, and again, that's one, I know that the local school district has addressed that. There's things that we, we are aware of that, but some counties are still very punitive in nature. So that's just an example of one thing. We hope that after we look at everything, we can ask the health department statewide, maybe make some recommendations. Um, poor Chuck probably is uh, getting sweaty palms because he's usually the one we have to bother because we try our best to fill it out in conjunction, but we don't want to make mistakes to where we send this up to the state and later on the school district would say, hey, wait, that's wrong. That's That was listed here. So we'll be bothering Chuck and we have a December deadline, but like most of you probably know as the holidays start happening, I try not to push things too far. So we'll probably be bothering Chuck or whoever he designates to help us pretty soon. So that was the big thing I wanted to tell you and also to thank you in advance and those that might get sucked into helping us complete this. Um, the other thing we have, and I hope some of you in the room might be interested in this, and I apologize for those of you that are joining us virtually. I will. I was told I could give these handouts uh, and they could be posted with the minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, this one, who's, who wants to do 60 hours worth of professional development training? Hey, all right. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, it's really in depth, uh, but we have three different trainings for tobacco education and certification for teachers. So if anybody thought, okay, I wouldn't mind having that certification behind my name, it's all free. But again, there's a 60 hour course, a 30 and a 10 that specifically deals with vaping things. So all of those, if anybody's interested, I have some handouts. And we always want to remind people that the health department working with uh, the Tobacco Free Florida and a, a group that's called the Area Health Advisory Council has quit opportunities. And there's three things. One good way to remember it, we call it the three C's. It's click, you can go online and take a class. Call, you can talk to a counselor or see a class, a live class. Which I'm forgetting that one. For a while, we weren't classing, but we are, de we are starting up and some groups are going again. Uh, with all of those, even if you know somebody that might want to quit smoking, one of the wonderful things is even as simple as calling and talking to somebody, they'll mail you free nicotine patches to help you quit right now. That's there's funding for that. So it's a great time. Most smokers during the course of the year, at least statistically, one time during the year, decide they want to quit. And the holidays is actually the worst time statistically to try to quit with all the parties and everything. Mm -hmm. But New Year's, like most of us, like I'm going to be going back on my regular diet that will be over by uh, January 15th, usually <laughs> I failed by then. Uh, 
Uh, you guys didn't have to laugh at that. Uh, the other thing, and this doesn't as much apply to the public schools, but if there's anybody with private schools that ends up seeing this, we have a course that's similar to the one that's already in place for the public school uh, district, but it is basically an alternative to suspension. So if a school is right now suspending kids, this is a way to say, okay, let's do an in-school suspension, if nothing else. And instead of just sitting there all day, you're gonna take education about vaping. And we're gonna kind of teach you something about why you shouldn't be doing it instead of punishing you. Okay, I'm on the home stretch here. Doesn't look like it does it is. I'm throwing my material around, but I am. Okay, the only two other things I wanted to mention is we, if anybody is uh, so inclined, we have a tobacco coalition that meets in town and it's gonna be December 9th. And anybody who would like to be a part of that is welcome and you can reach out to me for more information. And finally, you guys might, this might be a theme for today's meeting. There's a conflicting meeting, which some of you may be aware of. So I have a colleague who couldn't come in. So I'm gonna say something real quick for her if I can. Sure. Uh, many of you know Amanda Evans, maybe, mm -hmm. with the health department. Hey, Amanda, hey, woo-hoo. <laughs> uh, Amanda, uh, it came to her attention that the uh, Lee County School District had received a recognition called the Florida Healthy School District Recognition yeah. from 2016 to 2018. And it's kind of like the Olympics, it's gold, silver, and bronze. And if I understand it right, this county received silver several times. That award is uh, up again for application. And the time period is January through March, uh, 2022. I'm gonna have to get used to saying that. Uh, what she basically wanted me to uh, say is to tell you, so you're aware that the application process is coming, but to find out who she should work with. Um, kind of like we were bothering poor Chuck, there's probably somebody who's now getting sweaty palms on this one. But if anybody knows who she should be directed to, I don't know what I think of going on. So that would be Amy Carroll with Food and Nutrition Services. I think. Because yes, because there's all, there's a component. And we had a whole bottle yeah. of crate for them to do us. Right. Awards yeah. So I would need to be involved uh, from the health education aspect. Um, and okay. Wally Cologne, who is our new assistant director for health services, would be involved. Usually what happens with that, uh, Kurt, is it it comes into somebody. In the past, it had been Beth, so I'm going to say it probably goes to Wally first. She takes care of her part, and then she says, Amy, I need you to take care of the nutrition part. It comes to me. They need me to take care of the health education. It goes to Heather Parker as well in, in wellness because that's employee uh, health and wellness. That's included in that. And I would have to, I'd have to double check her, but if, if she, those P, if, if you give her those names, uh, we can find out who else needs okay. to be part of that. Okay. On her behalf, thank you for all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And starting with Amy, did I hear that part right? Amy. Starting with Wally. Oh, starting with Wally, Wally with Cologne. Wally Cologne. Okay. All yeah. right. I, Yesterday I was her first day, so we're going <laughs> to just throw her right under the bus, <laughs> right off the bat. Right off the bat. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Big job there, Wally. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I do have one quick question uh, about the um, you know, working with students because, of course, uh, we see. Um, um, students at the prevention center, uh, you know, who are there for vaping and uh, not just nicotine, but also with THC. But one of the obstacles we often run into at the district level are, you know, I can tell you as a 29 year health educator that just talking to them and not helping them quit, you know, any kind of punitive, any kind of rehabilitative if they don't have an opportunity for them to get assistance in quitting, um, it makes things very difficult. Um, but there's a lot of pushback, um, and I'm sure probably liability on the district's part, that, that sort of thing. Um, even providing, you know, some of the, the groups have the, where they can download the app and they can text and say, I don't know, I'm really Jones and for a cigarette and, and get, get, help reinforcement, yeah. but uh we're i would like for something to us to be able to come up with something that is assistive to students who have an addiction um that we can sell to our district because right now and and kathy would agree as a prevention specialist that we're very limited and we know 
uh, and I'm sure all of us in this room know that, um, you know, just giving them presentations and, you know, sending them to the prevention center for 20 days is not helping them with that addiction. Yeah. Um, and if we, do, you know, the sooner we catch that, the better. So that would be something that um, I would be interested in finding something that we could um, convince the district that this is good, um, whether it's something that we need to present to the board once we come up with something so that it is out for the public to see. Um, but that that's a big need. That's a big need. So just so you're aware, and you're probably already aware of that, but we're limited yeah. here at the district as to what we can. And you're not alone. Almost every group, the good news is there's not a group that I work with that even in the nonprofit world, American Heart, Cancer, Lung, and those groups are all kind of scrambling to come up because everybody sees it's the same thing for adults. You can say, okay, you need to quit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't help them at all, you're not really getting them to, you get lower yeah. to the water, but they're yeah. not drinking. Um, but there's a lot of good things. So I'd be happy to share and keep you guys abreast of what, because we're keeping a good eye on it. And the state, one example is kids can call a, a line now too if they want to quit vaping. Some of them are truly shocked that they're addicted to the nicotine already, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they can call and you reminded me because they can receive affirmations, I guess is the best way to say it. Guys start quitting and it's not exactly a class yet, but even, yeah. you know, you can do it, you know, this is your second day, get through this day and tips. So there's things starting to happen on that front. Uh, I, I would say that, is that through the Department of Health? That is through Tobacco uh, Free Florida. Okay, so my my rec recommendation to you guys is to somehow come up with a push to the Department of Education, something that would be endorsed by the Department of Education, because as a school district, I think that we would be, we would have less pushback about having something like that um, if it was coming from DOE. So that might be a good partner to try to work with. Uh, you know, if you can satisfy DOE, yeah. maybe we can, Kathy? We don't want us to endorse something that the kids can sex and get nicotine patches without some type of counseling component or, you know, some type of... You know, and if I sounded hesitant on that, the Florida quick line, because that part really is just for adults, unless right. you're at least yeah. 21, maybe now, was yeah. 18, yeah. the patches and all are off the table. Right. For, yeah. You know what, I, I, that yeah. always seems to be where we are, our hands are tied, because like you can't just give them a number and then not yeah. know if they're going to be getting. And, and a lot of the suggestions that we would certainly give to adults, we can't give to kids because right. these things haven't been tested as, as you know, mm -hmm. cessation methods or, you know, on kids. So um, I would strongly encourage uh, Tobacco Free Coalition, um, it, all of the groups together to approach the okay. DOE on something that's going to be satisfactory to them that districts can use because we, we've, again, I'm preaching to the choir here. You know, we've no, got, that's we've all got good to, feedback. That's yeah, very good to hear. Yeah. You guys said a real quick side note, because you might find this interesting. This is maybe 15 years ago. Um, and where I used to work, we had worked with Channel 7 and they did a, one of those uh, things on the news where they're like the first installment of a six part series coming up over the next you know, month. But what they did was they went to Fort Myers High School at the time, approached kids that were smoking, and said, could you quit if you wanted to? And the first response was, I don't want to quit. I'm enjoying doing this. But what they did is they said, what if we gave you $100? Would you be able to quit? And they all said, I could quit no problem for 100 bucks. So they did this long expose on the news. And out of the 10 kids they focused on, um, the first week it was kind of funny because they all said, I quit, I'm back and free. And then they told them, well, you know, we're going to test you tonight. And they took them to the hospital, one of those scared straight kind of things where they had to watch surgery on lungs and all that kind of thing. But they all said, I quit, and none of them had when they tested them. But by the end, only uh, three had been able to quit, and the other ones were truly, like, shocked that they were already unable to stop yeah. doing this. Yeah. And with vaping, most of you know, but the yeah. nicotine contents, if anything, were, were really fearful are higher, and it's going to be even harder. So uh, your point is well taken, because yeah. we're going to have to help them maybe even harder than we have adults in some Absolutely. ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Wonderful. All right. All right. Thank you all. And I have the brochures I mentioned, I'll put in the back, I guess. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay, and then thank if you'll you. email them to me, I'll get them out with the minutes. Okay, yeah. thank okay. you. Yeah. I have a quick comment, um, maybe. So I wonder if you, um, in the program, you track the different counties, maybe around the state, that have the higher, uh, where the higher success rate in getting the students actually admitted, right? Kind of to find out what what strategies have been successful in those mm -hmm. counties or school districts, 
and see why can we you know adopt it or adapt it here uh, in the country. Yeah, that's, a really good, that day, guys. that's a great point. And that's really the survey I mentioned. And that's part of what we hope to flesh out of all of that is to find wow, what what are what are these all stars it's doing? doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, thank you. All right, thank you all. Excellent. Thank time. you, Kurt, very much. We appreciate that. Uh, next up, we have a conglomerate of, of, uh, of people that are going to present on um, a new collaboration that we're working on here in the district. Uh, I, I, I don't know if we're, I think we're calling it the Healthy Living Collaboration. Um, but for those of you that are familiar, we used to have a healthy fit lab and a healthy living lab here at the district. Uh, and that had since been at the end of last year kind of disbanded. And um, I didn't want to see all that go to the wayside and sit in the closet and collect dust and that kind of thing. So a few of us got together and came up with, uh, with, a, with an idea of how we could kind of tie things together. So I'm going to let the team kind of share each component of that. Uh, Susie Hassett is from Environmental Ed. And um, we're going to let her start things off. Well, I thank you. So I'm really grateful to be here. Um, my team joined me. I've got John Bailey, who's my other resource teacher, and Elizabeth Rose and Shelby Costa. And all of us have the pleasure of assisting with our garden. So that's why I'm here for this healthy living collaboration. So over on the screen, you see the group of us that were at the school garden kickoff in September. And it was just a really exciting celebration of all that might be able to happen this year. I'm there we go. Different. Just <laughs> making it bigger. <laughs> just making it bigger. And you can touch this thing. Yeah, the one behind you is a smart no board. Kidding. There awesome. you go. All right. So school gardens oh, are fantastically rewarding for so many ways. Well, there's school clear. gardens and after a classroom, and it benefits students' growth in multiple ways. Some of the benefits are fresh, local, organic produce. And the students can taste that and taste test. There's an increased interest in healthy foods because if they grow it, they'll try it and be more likely to eat it. There are interdisciplinary lessons that you can teach out there, and I'll be talking more about that. You can incorporate math and ELA and social studies as well as learn science. There builds self esteem as they get their own plants to grow. There are social skills and character building that happen because they have to work in teams out there. There's multi-sensory stimulation, and we know that there are phytochemicals that really are beneficial to your brain and calming and um, for mental health and wellness. There are positive feedback loops that go on as they watch the whole process happening. There are leadership and STEM skills that are built as they're outside on um, measuring and planning and planting and problem solving. Um, increased activity outdoors, of course, is really important, especially we're finding after COVID. There's a real dichotomy that's happened. Some folks went outside. Some folks stayed inside and are locked on the screens, and they're even more detached from nature, so we don't like that. Um, the link at the bottom is for you for later, if you want to click on that and read some of the research. There is quite a body of research that supports with data that school gardens and learning outdoors have multiple benefits and really increase student achievement in multiple subjects. The picture there is from Littleton Elementary. So a little bit about my background. I was lucky enough to grow up with parents who garden. And so I garden my whole life. When uh, I was at Littleton Elementary for 10 years, this was the garden that we developed. And I was able to receive support from ECHO and community garden experts and Joe Mallon at Island Coast High School and quite a lot of different grants so that I could build a garden program where students could learn all the different ways you can grow food. And every year we would give them plants to go home and grow with their houses. So that was really wonderful. So gardens do have a lot of different purposes here in the county. They are utilized to support all kinds of initiatives, including hands-on support with Sunshine State Standards in Science, STEM, and Health Education. They can be used for taste tests and nutrition lessons. They're used in cafeteria fresh menus, and you'll hear more about that. Um, there are schools who have been certified to serve their food that they grow right in their own cafeteria. 
They can be used for service learning projects, for demonstration, demonstrations of food production techniques, for food banks and farms, for culinary classes, and for industry certifications in agriculture, as well as culinary on different purposes. So there's a link there for community garden purpose. That's another document that you can look at. And there's a learn, grow to learn garden guide. Those are from UF IFAS. So if you'd like to see some of those. The pictures are from during COVID at North Fort Myers Academy of the Arts. All that produce came from Island Coast High School and was given out to families that came to receive meals. Um, picture at the bottom is one of the salads that was made all from produce from Island Coast High during COVID. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the different types of gardens. There are a lot of types of gardens out there. You can see in the top, those two boys have hands full of berries and their faces are stained with berry juice and you can't ever duplicate that joy. <laughs> so they were very happy with their gardening. <laughs> So in ground gardening is traditional. That's what we're all familiar with. So Laura Shaw at Cape Coral High School has in ground gardening going on. And if you've never been to the Bellavery Gardens, I think you should really take a visit. She has a lot of fun things growing out there. Her kids have pineapples. They've been grown for years. And along with her moringa and some of her other ingredients, they make smoothies. They have a great time. And then of course there's the garden at Littleton. That actually was a federal grant that helped me get the fence in. But every year I get a different grant, not a different component. So we had uh, in-ground gardening, container gardening, raised bed gardening, hydroponics and aquaponics going on at that school. So it was a lot of fun. Container gardens fit anywhere. So anything can be a container. And I believe Al Piotr at Trafalgar Middle has tried them all. Because he'll grow things in pots. He got tile bins to make his raised beds on legs so that ESE students could have access. Mm -hmm. He can get stuff to grow in a styrofoam to get in. So he has lessons for students that they can try it all out. And if you grow in a container, you can have fresh, healthy food right on your balcony if you're in an apartment. Mm -hmm. You don't need to have plant. You can grow it in there. Raised beds are really simple to make and to maintain. They help keep the water and the nutrients in the bed and they help keep out the weeds. So Picture here is Tom Fats at uh, Eastley High and Shanna Windy at Rosedale High. They have quite a number of raised beds at their schools, you can see. And square foot gardens are a really great way to use a method to utilize all the space in your four by six bed. So I have a little paper here that elementary school kids can use to plan out a square foot garden. So what they do with this is decide the area of their bed. And this little worksheet, which I've pulled up, lets them calculate their space available. So this is a 16 square foot bed that they have in this picture. And then they can decide how many of each type of vegetable they want to put in each square foot. If you have a four by six bed, you've got 24 kids in your class, everybody gets their own square foot, they decide what they put into their little square foot. And you can reach in from the side and manage your little plot. So one tomato might fit in a square foot or 12 carrots, for instance. So that's this little method of gardening, makes it really simple. And this is one of the uh, worksheets from the harvest of the month, which you can get for free for your classroom. And I have some other examples in the back of the room if you wanna see some of those. That's a really great program. Permaculture includes Oops. perennial plants. Sorry. Did I skip one? No, no. I... I... <laughs> Sorry. So in permaculture, you're growing your fruit trees around your garden. Lori Shaw has that at uh, Bella Verde. She's got uh, pollinator plants, uh, pineapples, and her fruit trees, and her nutritional uh, leaf trees, like Moringa and Paytex, growing around the perimeter of her garden. So those plants grow year after year. It's not an annual harvest, per se, where you cut down the whole plant. They continue to grow. Um, Villas Elementary has a whole orchard that was planted with help, help from Hope Clubhouse. Um, and Hope Clubhouse has been 
a really great partner also for Cape Coral High School. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them in just a minute. Um, so you can see there at Villas, they have quite a number of different methods of gardening as well. They have their uh, fruit trees, and then they've got raised beds, and they've got hydroponics as well. You can stem up your growing with hydroponics. With hydroponics, it means that you're using water to bring nutrients to the plants instead of the plants getting nutrients from soil. So your plants can grow in a tower and they get watered a couple of times a day with uh, nutrient infused water. So that's where the nutrients come from. The media that they grow in does not have to be soil. It can be perlite and vermiculite, which drains really well. So the water passes through. So they have those at a lot of the schools there uh, providing increased production. They save water, they save space, they save fertilizer. They also keep that from going out into the watershed, which is really important. And they can be automated. So you can put the irrigation on a timer and it automatically waters three times a day. That's why the production is increased because they have optimal amounts of sunlight, nutrients, and water at all times. So within six weeks, you can have a fully grown pad of lettuce. And so that's how Island Coast produces tons of lettuce. So you see Island Coast Academy of Natural Resources there. Um, again, they've mentored quite a number of schools and gone out to help them set up hydroponic towers. Last year, it was Harns Marsh Middle, Lehigh Elementary. Already this year, they've been out at Lexington Middle. The last day we had before COVID struck, <laughs> they were out at Buckingham Exceptional, <laughs> setting up towers for that school. Uh, here's a picture of Littleton Elementary. The students really love to plant um, strawberries. If you look closely at these towers, they all are a little bit different design. And that's kind of cool for our little entrepreneurs to think about. So Island Coast has Mr. Stackies. I got hydro stackers at Littleton. There's a smart farm pictured there that's at Dunbar High. That's what they got. The single tower has a reservoir in the bottom and it recirculates the nutrient water. And then Trafalgar Middle has vertigos. So there's a lot of different versions of this. Hydroponics powered by solar and wind teaches sustainability. That's the goal at Island Coast High School. Uh, Joe Mellon's the teacher there that's been there uh, since the school opened. Uh, he runs this academy and his goal is to be off the grid, to teach folks that you can produce your food sustainably with very little impact on the environment. And so that shed has four solar panels and a wind generator, and it provides energy to eight batteries, and that runs enough power for, let me calculate this properly, 2,700 pots of plants. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's enough crazy. power to, to water all this. So it runs the irrigation system. You can see that there is a big cistern here that fills up with rainwater. So that's also where they get the water for this. They do supplement with some of the water from the system, but he's working really hard to teach people about sustainability and how you can grow your own plants and be living in a less impactful way. Um, picture there is Hans Marshmallow and Lehigh Elementary. They were part of a big project last year. They had lessons about solar energy. And a lot of the students were surprised to learn about solar energy when it is such a great option for us in Florida. So that happened last year. And uh, we added lessons in energy and engineering. Another component of this was Dunbar High School who designed their own solar uh, cart and they designed it with CAD programs and then they 3D printed all their components and put it all together. So these students did a really great job. And they shared what they learned with these other schools as well. So it was a solar power squared project. And I put a link in there so that you could jump to that and see the results of it from the end of the year last year. Pollinator gardens provide a whole extra set of opportunities for growth. So picture there are students observing the pollinators, learning that there are not just honeybees out there. There are lots of native bees. And it turns out that when you have pollinator gardens, near your vegetable gardens, of course, you're going to have more production because you have more pollinators 
to help you produce that food. Pollination is critically important for any of our fruits um, and flowers need to be pollinated. And then there's other forms of agriculture. So you can see some tilapia and one of the tilapia tanks. Oh, let me go back. You can grow more than plants through aquaculture. So, and the tank to the left, both of those pictures, we're in the lab at Island Coast High School. And the picture at the top that's a little dark is red claw. So they're producing red claw, which looks like a small lobster. And they're producing tilapia. This tilapia were used uh, for fish fries at football games this year. In the past, they've had community events where the families can come in and try some of the fish and try some of the salad, learn to make a rain barrel. So they're hoping to plant another save a table event probably before Christmas. Oh, they're wow. trying, the students are trying to decide how best to utilize the fish that they're going to harvest mm -hmm. uh, and the plants that they're producing. And they want to help people in need. So I may have to have you give me some suggestions because they were wondering, could we feed homeless people? If we give them a plant, would they be able to grow it? They have a lot of great questions. Mm -hmm. So you have five minutes, we'll be talking about that. Um, on the right hand side, that is a pool that's at uh, Eastley High School. They're just getting started with their aquaculture, which can then be used in aquaponics. So you can grow both plants and the fish in aquaponics. So it models a natural system where the plants and the fish are interdependent on each other. So you can see those fish that were in the tank at Island Coast have their water circulate through this up and flow system. And the plants utilize those nutrients to grow and clean the water for the fish. So it circulates all around over and over. It's a natural filter system so that you can utilize the waste of the fish. And it actually has beneficial bacteria that process it. And it makes the plants start to grow really healthy. Um, and then at Littleton Elementary, there's an NFT system. It circulates water through the plants. Um, that picture of the fish in the pool that was clear water as after it circulates through the plants. So down in the bottom of these, there's a net pot and the roots are just growing there. The water flows right past. Vermiculture is one way to reduce food waste. And it's a very quick way to do composting. So this is a worm gun. You can put in your uh, leftover plant parts and you shred paper from your office, and that's the bedding for the worms and the food for the worms. And they turn it into really rich compost, which you see in the middle. And Al Piotr will be happy to make you some worm tea. <laughs> he puts it all in a cheesecloth bag, and you can put it in a bucket of water and aerate it. And that's better than miracle Grow water that you on your plants. That's amazing. So. He does that out at that school. There are two schools that have worm composting because you can do a whole new set of lessons with the students about worms and about what happens with the processing of your waste and, and some healthy things to do with waste. There are livestock, uh, future farmers of America clubs, vet tech academies that are different schools. There are a lot of schools that have chickens and rabbits. Some schools even have goats and cows. They're working on that at Riverdale and pictured here. In South Fort Myers High School, sure to exist, does a vet tech academy. Uh, Mary Graham over there is here because of these great academies that she supports for career tech ed. Um, also pictured is the chicken coop over at Lehigh Elementary. Villas Elementary has her own chickens. They are and, loud. Yeah, they're really loud. Their principal <laughs> loves them. That's the principal there at Villas. So he is very happy to show off his chickens, and students can go out and read with the chickens, and that's quite a motivator for students. They can learn all about life cycles and, and do all kinds of lessons with the chickens. Rabbits, goats, and chickens are out at Alba. They're continually really growing their ag program because they have a lot of support from their community, uh, helping them build their barn, build their hutches, build their raised beds, all that. So current garden outreach and events. So every year we hold uh, different versions of our garden educator workshops. Um, Kelly's been helping me with this for a long time. While I was at Littleton Elementary, I hosted uh, gardening to grade quite a number of years ago. And that's a curriculum through Florida Adding Classroom. They sent somebody else to run it, and they've made quite a lot. Uh, more recently, we did a garden 
for nutrition. So I have copies of that that you can look at. But that's all free online. So our school garden kickoff event, September 23rd, was quite a success. It was hosted by Hope Clubhouse, which is a community organization who serves folks, uh, adults, with any type of mental illness. So they can come there during the days to gain skills for employment, to uh, participate in horticultural therapy, and to receive opportunities for socialization. So when they come, they can work out in these permaculture gardens that surround the entire building and have taken over the parking lots nearby. I want to... Uh, I just want to make sure you guys know the issues with mental health right now, because especially with COVID, horticultural therapy. If you've ever worked in the dirt and made something grow, so that's another thing that we didn't even <laughs> list in here. And so, the greatest thing is they approached me um, three years ago. So before COVID ever happened, they said, listen, we have horticultural therapy that we can offer. We want your students to be aware when they age out of high school and they find themselves in need, we don't have a lot of different services in our county for them to address mental illness, especially if they are a high need student, um, but they can come here. Everybody's welcome here. Um, we get them plugged right in. Um, there's a lot of hope. You have to be optimistic. You have to be hopeful if you're gonna plant something because you gotta hope it's still gonna be going tomorrow. Or if it's not that you can just plant again. So it really teaches resiliency. So it was really great to partner with them. As I said before, um, Mark Selleck, who is pictured down in the lower right, was our host. Um, he has plugged in at quite a different um, number of agencies, um, including Villas, Cape High School, Island Coast High School, North Myers High School. Before COVID, he was able to bring in one or two of his volunteers. Um, he was at Littleton. And they would come and help assist in the gardens because his, his extra hands and extra manpower and to add some expertise. Um, so that's a picture of the facility at Hope Clubhouse. We gave away all those plants on that picnic table. Um, you can see the group was gathered at tables and it was a celebration of everything that was about to happen this year. Um, all the food was all plant-based. And a number of us brought different things that we had made from things from our garden. It was a lot of fun. It was pretty inspiring. And we just heard yesterday about some of the impacts that's had uh, that the school continues to grow. So our um, group really came together for this event. And so the collaboration has grown since then. We had Mary Graham from CTE. Um, we had our nutrition services, of course, Amy Carroll. Um, health education, we should became involved then. She heard about party and wanted to join. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, I'm not proud. <laughs> yeah, my this, of course, is integral. Um, Echo came out. Echo is our uh, educational concerns for hunger organization. And it's a group here locally. If you haven't heard of them, they have global farms in North Fort Myers. And they do train missionaries to go out to help solve hunger issues around the world. And they have different... Um, centers around the world where they go out and they, they teach folks um, ways to garden using what you have. Um, and they teach about appropriate technologies for your region. You know, you may not have much, but you've got this and this is what you can do. Um, so they're a fantastic group. Kelly was an intern in there. That's how I met her in the first place. Back when I was at Littleton, she came out to help out. Uh, Naples Botanical is very happy to support our schools as well. They have a program called Call Your Greens that supplies um, curriculum, uh, technical support, and plants for schools, even in Lee County. And then Cultivate Abundance is a group that supports the Immokalee farm workers and gives them plants that they can grow at home to supplement their diets. But they're also getting involved in Franklin Park Elementary at the community garden that they're trying to revamp right there at that school. And they're supporting our school. So here are some of our heroes behind the scenes. That's Mary Graham out there at Island Coast helping germinate some of those plants to give away. Raj Marminsky is at Hope Clubhouse. She also is an Echo Community Garden intern. And so she and Kelly are pictured there. 
They continue to help provide technical support and encouragement and plants and all kinds of other support for our school gardens. And the school garden leadership training that started last year with COVID, uh, we had been doing in person and then with COVID we had changed it up. And it became actually a really positive thing because there was statewide Kelly helps to um, present this series. Anybody can tune in. Um, it's virtual, it's once a month, and they cover all different kinds of topics. So it's really beneficial cool. to see what's happening across the state, different school districts. How do they handle these issues, these problems? How do they solve them? And what are some of the inspiring things that are going on? So anybody can join that. And the next one is December 2nd. December 2nd. Tune in. And it's all recorded. So if you can't tune in on December 2nd, you can still get it. Some of the other great things that I have uh, Kelly to thank for are Eat Local Lee. I'm going to pop over to that. This is our map that anybody can access. It's eatlocallee.org. Hit school gardens there. And so you can find out all about where you can get local healthy food, what's in season. And then uh, if you want to see where the school gardens are, they're on the map. So you gotta scroll, scroll down. down. This is a PDF. I'll go down to the bottom. It's it the is orange. right down the bottom. It's purple. I think the schools are orange. Oh, I remember correctly. Never mind. I have this app on my phone, so I'm always looking for the farmers market and the farmers various. Market. The farmers market. Yeah. That's a cool thing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is that making everybody <laughs> sick? <laughs> You're right. Okay, there. Here we are. Take me to it. There. So just kind of slowly scroll through that. Just to see how many there are. So there are lots and lots. And these are the ones that reported they have a school garden. There are more. Mm -hmm. The intention with this is that if folks know that there's gardening going on at a school, we'd love to have their support. Mm -hmm. um, now, as we're able to have some volunteers come on campus outside at least, we'd love it if we have master gardeners who are nearby that want to come support at a school. Add just a little bit of consultation or some hands-on supervision of the garden work. So that was the intention of being in the map, just to make sure that people knew that this was happening. So gardens and schools are maintained by classes, by clubs, by volunteers, by community partners, and all different iterations of that. Um, Trafalgar Middle has a builders club that works with Kiwanis. So the builders club helps do extra maintenance on their gardens and do projects where they feed the community. Project Victory Gardens was another beneficial outcome of COVID. So when the COVID shutdown happened, um, like I said, the day before we left, we just put in a garden at Buckingham Exceptional. Over break, we were told we're not coming back. All these gardens were still in full function, full production. So we quickly came together and um, teachers were allowed to go outside on the school campus and harvest that food. So we started at Island Coast and that was really the hub of it, where we harvested the food, we got it to the feeding lines, we went out and helped harvest food at Trafalgar Middle, at Riverdale High, at Littleton Elementary, some of these places that were growing enough to give away. And at the same time, we decided how can we help people? Uh, fresh produce is a problem right now. People having access to that is a problem. What if we give them some plants and tell them how to grow it? So we asked for help from Echo, um, from Naples Botanical, and from um, Cultivate Abundance, and from Hope Clubhouse. So they all donated plants. And uh, Naples Botanical came out to some of these seating events, especially down in the South. Um, and so as people were coming to get meals, they also received plants. And it was so wonderful to see the joy on their faces. And um, when they received the plants, they received 
a little flyer that said, if you need to know how to support these plants and how to produce more food for yourself, go to this website, Project Picture Garden. And let me interrupt you one other while well, that's loading. Sure. Um, the Eat Local Lee, I'm gonna try to put this in front of the screen. Oh, I can't, this is why I don't use a, <laughs> use a curling iron. So that's in the book. <laughs> <I'm like>, oh. <laughs> So um, in the Play Store or the App Store, that's what it looks like. You can download it for free and you can go through and see all of those different things. I just, I, I'm like you, I ram, I, I, I get into it and I forget so to mention stuff. So yeah. I wanted to make sure that everyone saw that, that um, they could get that app, have the app on your phone. Okay. And as there are supply issues, that is critically important. Yeah. yeah and yeah. as an environmental educator, it's critically important that we eat local and we don't have to transport stuff. Mm -hmm. So far, yeah. mm -hmm. because it's going to save us all. Yeah, yeah. The, the more we can plant and grow locally, yeah. the better off we're going to be for sustainability mm -hmm. and resilience. Mm -hmm. Drag the bottom of this. So this is the Project Victory to Gardens to website. To if you go to this, you're going to be able to see not only from the school gardens, some of the things going on. You're also going to be it's able fine. to find out how to garden who our community partners are and access all of their great resources and information. I, I wouldn't worry about Links and tips. Um, all I'm kinds of videos. Say, go there and look um, yourself. Yeah, some of it that are trans that's translated. They're great gardening things to try. Recipes. Um, it does tell a little bit about our Earth Week and COVID response for the 50th Earth Day. And there's a place where you can submit pictures and show how your plants grew. So that's one of the ways we celebrated folks taking these plants. They sent in pictures and showed off what they were able to do. And some of them were growing for the first time. They were so excited. Elizabeth, what do you want to add? Can I add my grant? Sure. So I'm going to try not to try to fix it. Um, <laughs> A fresh grow that you'd be feeling. You couldn't buy some fresh produce in the store, but they couldn't afford it. And we could get all produce. I had parents in tears. I had kids ducking out of their seats. Earth Week come along, we get them plants. These kids were ecstatic. If they could jump out of that car, they would have. I had grandparents crying. The produce and what the school districts did during COVID and during Earth mm -hmm. Week was. Huge. And I can see that for myself. I worked. We even got some of our staff that hadn't been out of the house in months. Mm -hmm. They came, finally got came out and into the gardens. They too were almost in tears because they hadn't been out of their own homes. It was very huge for our students, for our staff, for our community, and the people that went through those lines. I think it changed a lot for them. I know yeah. it changed for me because that's my happy place. Horticultural the therapy. Horticultural therapy. <laughs> therapy. Yes, yes. <laughs> therapy during COVID. Yep. Yep. It's really easy to social distance. We ended up giving away, our goal was giving away a thousand plants, and we took off 3,300. It, it just kept multiplying. Did you want to say something? We used Island Coast High School as our hub to um, plant a lot of these. So we germinated plants, plotted them up, and we use that as the storehouse to reach out. So we went to over 10 different locations at different schools in different parts of the county. So we made sure we got out in the Lee Pod, we got the South Fort Myers, we were down out in Cape Coral, we went everywhere. So food and nutrition helped to support us and okay. find us locations and, and we were actually using the healthy living truck for that <laughs> we to buy the plant <laughs> so we're like hey we need to truck and the folks who up. were doing the healthy living lab up. came out and helped us with our distribution so that was a great thing that happened just recently oh, oh my gosh i've been so bored mm -hmm. there we go so fast forward to October, Florida Crunch. Oh, it's another great collaboration. So picture there is Joe Mellon. Um, they made a video for him. Um, he's very charismatic. If you haven't met him, you should really go visit him. He will tell you all about his gardens because he is very enthusiastic about his purpose. 
he really wants to see a garden at every school and he will do it himself if he has to. And he has already proved that he is willing to do that over the past 10 years, let me tell you. Just innumerable gardens he's made, uh, tabletop aquaponic systems that you can borrow from him on a cart and it's a fish tank with plants growing on top, all kinds of things. Um, so that's Joe and one of his students with a head of lettuce, that's a giant head of lettuce. Um, they produce a lot of lettuce and continue to produce a lot of lettuce. <laughs> like most high school, like a ton of lettuce. <laughs> and they're expanding, yeah. And uh, in the middle picture, you can see our Food Nutrition Collaborative team. We've got Bree and Amy and Julie from Nutrition Services. We've got all the lettuce that's been washed with Kelly Wilson from you know, Five Coast. And in the far picture, Amy's out on uh, Island Coast. Amy and Mary were out helping us out with planting and harvesting and all kinds of things this year. So that fresh lettuce was picked up in the morning by Amy, taken to the school, cleaned, set out on trays, and then they had this big celebration where all the students got their piece of lettuce. And they all crunched it at the same time. That's why it's called Florida Crunch. We actually are going to watch a video on that in a little bit. It's so yeah. fun. And by the way, I just want to throw in when she says a ton of lettuce, um, not today. over 2,000 pounds of lettuce. That was not just a, you know, a phrase. It was over a, a ton. Yeah, last year was over a ton. So, our new thing, thanks to Alicia joining us, is our Healthy Living Collaboration. So Alicia joined the group and imagined the components of the Healthy Living Lab and the Healthy Fit Lab, which have been tabled, and saw those as opportunities to, to support nutrition and wellness out in schools. UFIFIS is going to tell you all about their programs, where they are willing to provide this education free of charge to the schools as part of their mission. And why not utilize all these great resources that we have right here? So this comprehensive health and wellness initiative will link school gardens with their cafeteria menus and their nutrition classes, even available for families, mental health initiatives and community outreach, including SNAP benefits that are available to families. So this will improve our overall health for our families and community and increase food security for our families. And the goal is to promote healthy minds and bodies and multi-sensory cross-cultural learning for our students. And that's just the beginning. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to provide support and resources for each school to have a garden. So this was just this fall at Littleton Elementary. The student dug up a sweet potato. It's like he found gold. You can see the look on his face. It's like, yes! <laughs> and they have to take those home and eat them and you know, have taste tests and they were delicious. So our needs are a community garden resource teacher or manager on assignment. My main role is to take kids out on field trips. Last year during COVID, I wasn't allowed to take kids on field trips. I had a lot more time to devote to this and really invest in it and see the need. And so many schools this year are asking for help because they want to grow gardens. They see the benefits of gardens. Our special centers uh, like LAMP, which is for our adolescent pregnancies, um, mothers, and also our Success Academy are asking for gardens this year. They're saying, how can you support us? We, we see the benefits, we want to do this. So we need somebody, um, maybe a manager on assignment from nutrition to consult with the teachers and help support them and to get them started and point them in the direction of all the resources. Um, we need tools and teams and coordinated networks so that we can share these resources. Some of our um, career and tech academies have the benefit of being funded and supported through their certification. So when they do an industry certification, the school does get some money back from that and that helps run those programs. So some of them have tillers. You only really need your tiller for a couple of weeks. So if they share that with an elementary school nearby, probably wouldn't hurt. So we need to work on some of those networks. Of course, Island Coast has been really beneficial and germinating seeds and sending those plants out to schools. So they've kind of acted as a hub as well as a mentor for that. Um, we need plans for sharing the produce and for reducing food waste. There's a lot we can do with that. And then having the students grow their own food definitely is helping to get them, even though they always have nutritious choices, we want them to eat it. <laughs> That's the big thing. So we want to influence these healthy life habits 
that will benefit them and the community for years and years and years to come. So with that, I am passing on to Amy Carroll, I think, next, whoever wants to go next. I think Amy is next. Okay. So that's the end so of an alteration in the agenda. We're back done. in the back is <laughs> more of these uh, um, harvested a month worksheets that you can see examples of. You can see some thank you that came from Gulf Elementary from just recently. Uh, John Bailey was over there helping them plant, and Shelby Foster was over there helping them plant the students for thank you letters. They're very cute. Very hard. Um, that was a, also a collaboration with Island Coast. They provided part of the plan. We are just starting to collaborate with them. Um, uh, 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 and they want to have interns come out. So it's, yeah. we're able to have the interns. Uh, we've had interns in the past. Yeah, I know they so we want to like do like more of that. Yeah, and I know they've done like a project before too. They come in and they talk about the school course to go in and they teach the different um, school. I know they taught, I had to do like a, a lot of classes with them. So it's really good. That's awesome. Yeah, we're very hopeful to, to really grow that partnership. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Yep. yep, and you're in charge over there. Ontario. You can tap um, the screen. Yep. Okay, well, good morning. Uh, thank you, Susan, for sharing that. <laughs> that was amazing. So my name is Andrea Moron Vasquez, and I am the Extension Program Manager for the Family Education Program. Um, well, our whole name is UF Isis Extension Family Education Program. And I'm here with my team. So you will see that my our presentation will be a little bit different because I'm, I'm going to invite all of them to say something. And we all will put together um, a quick overview of our program and how we have been working with Amy, Susie, now with Misha, and, and our idea of how we can collaborate with this um, project of you know, keeping healthy living lab and healthy keep lab alive. I think um, we have out in the community a lot of resources. And uh, as Misha said at the beginning, we don't want to see that project go to the waste or stay in a storage room. We want to, to keep that project outside the community and uh, and if we all can collaborate to do that, that um that would be fantastic. And that's why we are here. So um what is a family nutrition program? I just want to before I continue, I just want to check uh we have um, Jasmine Gallo on, on Zoom, right? Jasmine, you're there. Thank you for coming. And do we have someone from the community partnership school? Uh, I just wanted, yeah. Yes, this is Angela Jackson, um, direct, regional director. Good morning. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the U.S. Access Extension uh, Family Education Program has provided SNAP education since 1990. Uh, through partnerships uh, with all uh, local organizations. We are uh, in, across Florida. Uh, our headquarter is in Gainesville. And uh, each county uh, out of 67, we are in 40 counties. Right now. Uh, we provide education by teaching people who are SNAP eligible. That's our one requirement of our grant because we are grant funded. And uh, one of our um, requirements is that we teach uh, if you have eligible uh, participants or, or members of the community. And, um, and we teach them how to, to uh, have good nutrition, but at the same time, uh, how we can eat healthier on a budget. So that's the idea, how they can expect. We have, our funding comes from the USDA through the Florida Department of Children and Families. And programming is based on it's evidence based, and the um, programming is based on the current dietary guidelines for Americans, um, the physical activity guidelines for Americans, and my group. That's uh, all, all the strategies that we're doing. Good morning. How are you? 
And this is our mission. We and actually, I'm, I'm just uh, limited resource families in Florida really in the access meeting. more nutrition for choices on a budget yeah. and adopt healthier eating. I knew you would call me. Yes, we have it. Okay, that's our mission. Now I want to introduce my team. So you can you can um, learn from who we are. Okay, so um, Janice Watson. You can come here and introduce yourself. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you for having me here today. And I, I enjoyed your presentation, Susan. I didn't know that many schools had the school garden. <laughs> yeah, I've been with the Family Nutrition Program since 2017 for uh, approximately four years. And uh, when I first came into the nutrition, uh, the nutrition program, uh, my primary goal basically was just uh, to be a positive role model as a nutrition educator. Uh, I got a kind of unique background uh, with law enforcement, 17 years with law enforcement, child abuse investigator, and uh, I did a lot of things in the community, and I'm also a veteran. So I wanted to be a positive role model for those kids, but when we come in with our program, it takes on a whole new level for the children. It, uh, it really does. They enjoy the lessons of the hands-on uh, type uh, lesson that we give them, and we provide the gardening curriculum as well as the cooking curriculum and the dietary guidelines. Uh, they learn all about the food groups. Uh, my passion is the gardens, <laughs> uh, the gardening curriculum. So uh, I can go on and on about my experience. I don't want to cheer up like a little bit. I just want to say uh, how extremely important it is uh, that the kids uh, receive exposure. Uh, we were talking about some of our uh, young people facing and uh, some of the young people having the uh, mental issues and different issues, but just exposure uh, to the uh, former generation and the resiliency, uh, like Susan touched on, uh, what it takes uh, to grow food and creating an excitement to grow their own food. And I believe this is what leads to uh, wellness and a healthier lifestyle if we can just uh, connect with that younger generation. So, I don't want to go on and on. Uh, other people need to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then our nutrition educator, uh, Sharifa Davis. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Sharifa Davis. I have been with the Family Nutrition Program only since April. But I have a background with doing um, opioid education for America Vista. I did that first year. And then after that, I went to Drug for Southwest Florida. I was with Drug Canal for two years. And then I won my lovely team here. And I'm excited and I'm still learning. Um, the areas that I focus on most are our youth. So that's our GP team, that's our after school, and that's also our in school kids. And I'm really excited with them. I introduced different fruits. Just last week, I introduced uh, yellow dragon fruit. And this week, when I saw them and asked them how they go, they were like, oh, what's the big grocery store? We found a pink one. <laughs> and oh my God, I can't find them. Where did you find it? <laughs> so that was awesome. And um, it's exposing them to me, especially with their taste buds. Um, Janet's passion for the garden, I have a passion for like, the kitchen. So, and I know this is a lot of the kids I'm working with, they haven't been exposed to different taste buds. And, hey, what is that? Just ask me. I was like, just try it. Have I served you on? She was like, mm, not yet. <laughs> so, um, just yesterday, we did veggies our way. So, I taught them three ways to try their veggies. Either you can have them raw, you can slightly cook where they still have a crunch, or you can have them all the way cooked where they're a little mushy. Um, I did add a little bit of chicken breast in there. And but I gave them more veggies. And I was like, so did you guys notice that you had more veggies than chicken? 
And they had to write with it as well. So they thought it was white rice. And so at the end, I told them, what am I right? I went with white rice. I was like, what was brown rice? You check that again. So um, I'm really enjoying my time with the Young Nutrition Program. And I'm so excited about this collaboration. Um, thanks, Felicia. I will be starting with Jamie Rippett for their fifth grade class. And I'm nervous, but excited about the same time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, um, I need to introduce Tiana Schneider. She's not here uh, right now. She, she should be flying to Colombia by now. But, um, but Tiana Schneider uh, is our nutrition educator since uh, 2018. And uh, she wants to share that her passion is empowering the community by educating and highlighting the importance of nutrition and physical activity as key components of individual well-being. So and I have a message for you. She told me many, many times, please, Andrea, let them know that physical activity is an important component of wellness. And I'm here to share with you all her message. <laughs> and as you can see, I have an amazing team. I have my gardening lady, I have my kitchen lady, and I have my physical activity lady. So that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what we um, try to do when we go out in the community. We want to cover all the aspects of well-being, okay? And with this collaboration that we are trying to have, it, uh, for me, it will close, close the circle. It will, it will close the circle because we are integrating gardening, integrating cooking, we are integrating physical activity. And all that will, will, will help us to go and have healthier students, healthier communities, and reduce the uh, incidence of chronic diseases. That's our goal. Okay, Seattle, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Rosaya, Rosaya is not here, but she's an important piece of our team, our office assistant. She's, she's related on health with all the administrative staff. Uh, where is this? Where is that? We need this. We need that. <laughs> That's Rokaya. Okay. And then I would love to be Kelly. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Kelly. You've already heard a lot about me and what I do. Um, but I've been a food facility specialist with the Family Nutrition Program since October of 2018. So that's about two years, and it's been a really amazing experience to have this job and you know work alongside you all at the schools. Um, what I love about this work is, is the collaborative component and seeing how, how working together we can do so much more um, and really seeing how so much of the potential that I've seen you know since I moved to South Florida in 2016 and, and seeing everything that's going in, in, on in the school district has only been strengthened and that the momentum only grows. So I love that a lot, and it's, it's such a pleasure to work with you all um, and, you know, for the benefit of the community and the students. So, um, thank you. I'll talk to you, Kathleen. Thank you, Sally, and then Kathleen. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Kathleen Morales Perez, and I'm the public health specialist with the U.S. Association Family Nutrition Program. And I joined the team last year, right before the a little bit after the pandemic. So it's been a year and a few months since I've been with the program, and I'm really passionate about just to be part of that puzzle of creating healthier environments for our community, specifically in the school setting. Just creating that environment that is that is nudging sometimes consciously and unconsciously our students to make uh, uh, selections about the food that they put in their bodies right so i'm really passionate about that in this program and of course the amazing thing i've worked with has been educating me and, bring, and helping me to gather all those food, to put them together and contribute in different ways to achieve those goals of course in this wonderful partnership that we are creating in the community so that's a little bit of what I do, and we're going to be sharing more later. But yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. OK, so as I said before, we are in 40 counties uh, out of 67. Each, um, each county in Florida has an extension office. But it's, uh, um, 
uh, FMP is in four counties. All the all the counties are um, in a SNAP education is still DOH. Okay, they do SNAP education in other counties. Okay, so we have each county, and this is our map. And here you can see uh, these areas are the areas that we are interested in cover more because these are the areas of uh, in um, this kind of pink, you can see uh, the food desert, and these are our low income areas. So when you see the purple, um, the orange dots is where we are teaching or doing some kind of programming right now. And our uh, project for this year is to extend our services into the Beehive Acre area, for example. That's one of the goals that we have for this year. So that's where we are right now in Lee County. And um, we work in three program areas. Um, creating healthy childcare centers, as um, Charissa was mentioning before, we try to expose our kids from from very you know at an early age uh, with nutrition and healthy eating. And there is enough evidence um, that supports that when you expose them at that age, they will have better habits in their um, adulthood. So that's why our focus is to, you know, um, um, work with the BPK groups, kindergartners, and we are trying to cover this area, creating healthy charcoal centers. The, another strategy is that um, Kathleen will mention later. Then creating healthier schools, of course, huh? if we want to uh, get our youth, go to school, to get there. And uh, <laughs> the good thing in Lee County is that uh, all our, our schools in Lee County are, a SNAP, um, are eligible for our program because they receive free breakfast and lunch. So we don't need to work with other counties, they have to you know, work with their principals and see, okay, do, you have, uh, do they qualify for the program in Lee County? We don't need to worry about that. All the schools in Lee County qualify for, um, for the family nutrition program. And uh, creating, creating healthy communities. So we also go to places where people gather. So we go to community um, centers, we go to parks, uh, we go to churches, any any place where people congregate and uh, as not eligible families gather, we can be there and provide nutrition education either for adults or for the youth. And well, we provide, I'm going to talk about a little bit more about direct education. Uh, we offer free evidence based nutrition sessions, nutrition classes for all each groups to support wellness initiatives. So, what kind of topics do we cover? Um, as Charissa said before, cooking skills, uh, shopping on a budget, uh, reading nutrition labels, preparing and storing food safety, safely. Uh, growing fresh produce, be, being more physically active, and improving the home food environment in general. Our staff is trained on garden nutrition, so they all have a training and they can help teachers uh, to, in, to teach, uh, to implement gardening for nutrition curriculum inside the classroom. And of course, if they have a garden, they will love to teach that outside in the garden. Um, we have our curriculum Juice Understanding My Plate, uh, YUM, which feeds the Florida standards for education. The same thing with Compartment for Nutrition. So we can go inside the classroom and um, teach them um, about healthy eating and how to be um, more physically active. So we have two special guests, and we invite um, and Jasmine Gallo from Tyson Elementary School. We have Good morning. Now. Um, and uh, she wants to share with us, we asked her if she can come here and share with us what has been her experience uh, with uh, working with the Family Nutrition Program and implementing nutrition education inside the class. So, Jasmine, you can unmute yourself. Okay, so you need oh. to stop. Do you need to stop sharing or do I need to? This is <laughs> dang it, you there's a curveball. <laughs> going so well. Uh, I think that we need to let uh, Jasmine. Yes, hear. good morning. Can you hear me? Hey, uh, hold on one second. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, that's that it has to come through here okay. for Zoom. No, somebody from Zoom. So, um, we're just going to crank it up really loud. 
Good morning. Can you hear me? Hang on just a second. Let me see. Okay. Yes. Technical difficulties. That's okay. I was hoping there was one of those microphone things in here, but there is. So, no. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, I wonder if we can put that up to the speaker. Up to the speaker. Right. Now, so how do I make it loud? Good morning. Can you hear me? Let's see how, see how. Hold on one second. Where's the speaker? Okay. No idea. That's, that's, Jasmine, go ahead and start talking. We're trying to find a speaker. Good morning, everyone. I know a few of you, and I'm happy to Hang see on just a where second. Right? We're still, I don't know how. To... Come here, Bailey. Hey. There should be a way. To, that's okay. There should be a way to increase our volume. Where, technical de technical difficulties here. I hear you fine. Well, we can't hear you fine. Oh, okay. Try one more time, Yasmin. Okay. I want to bring him to a hundred percent. Maybe that would help. Good. We're good. We got you. So everybody just has to be really quiet and listen carefully. Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Yasmin Gallo, and I am a parent, the parent involvement here at Taita Elementary School. Uh, our school, our administration, our teachers, myself, our students, the staff, it's so thankful to have uh, the UF uh, program here at school, the Family and Nutrition Program. And we started the program in September 2018. Ms. Andrea Moron came to the school. Since I am the parent coordinator for the school, uh, I was chosen one to come and meet her and talk to her. And she did present the program to us. I still have the brochure from 2018. I do have all the materials, everything that came on this folder. <laughs> we are so thankful that um, our teacher for the first time, or I don't know, they call it as a program assistant, as a teacher, nutrition teacher, Ms. Janet Jackson. She is a wonderful person. She came, we worked together the first year with the students. We did, remember, we did pre K and kindergarten. Uh, the sessions were introduced. Um, we have five kindergarten classrooms and three pre-K classrooms then. Now we have to two pre-K and five kindergarten. So she introduced the curriculum called YUM, YUM, YUM. Mm. So, and then she introduced the curriculum with the food safety, my plate, good some grain, fun with fruit and veggies, delicious dairy, Pro, power of protein. I still have the schedule right here. <laughs> yes, I do save everything. So we started it in each classroom for a, for a half an hour class. Kids were into it. She was so amazing. I mean, like the games and hands on, and the kids, they'll always, when they see me on the hallway, they'll say, Miss Gallo, Miss Gallo, are we having the lady again? And I say, what lady? The fruit and vegetable lady. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's Janice Jackson. Yes. Yeah, I say, she'll be here. She will come next week. I say, because I remember, I think we have the first class on Wednesdays. So every Wednesday, you know, I will send in the day before, I will send a reminder to the teachers hey, tomorrow you're having uh, the US fruit and vegetable in your classroom. So be ready. So everybody knew that she was coming, right? So the kids will love when they did like fun activities. Because, you know, they don't have free time, really. It's everything on every minute. You have to teach. It, teach. But this is kind of different. You're teaching, but at the, same time, at the same time, you're learning, you know, healthy foods and things that they never seen before. So it was so amazing. So the following year, 2019, uh, Ms. Yellow Schneider came along. And, you know, she offered me the program. It was, you know, the same thing. And I say, wonderful, but on top of that, she introduced me, why don't we try the cooking class? And I say, cooking class, 
say, oh, I'm not a great cook myself. She goes, oh, you don't have to do nothing in your part. I do it all the teaching. I will present recipes. I will do everything that I need to show them how to start eating healthier and on a budget. I say, really? And then I say, is there a fee? Do I have to pay anything that's my school is liable for any payment? She goes, no, everything is free. I say, oh, that's wonderful. I say, well, let me talk to my uh, boss, administration, of course. And they, when I approached my boss and she said, wonderful, yeah, we would love to try it. So we had two programs going at the same time, one for the kids and one for the adults. Uh, we had a great turnout. I still have our attendance here. The, uh, the, I say adults, but it's really my parents, you know, school parents. They came like at 1.30 every Monday to teach the class. And I created this like an attendance sheet to make sure we have proof that we are doing the program. And uh, as you can see, people came. We had a great attendance. Ms. Schneider, no, Schneider is a wonderful um, program assistant. She motivates the family. Um, and she also implemented physical activity. You will not believe when she mentioned Zumba class. I'm like, what? Zumba? She said, yeah, we have to move. We have to move. And I'm like, they need to learn how to move, what they can do to improve their health, not just what they need to buy, you know, things when they go to the grocery stores. Our families had a lot of questions. How do we read labels? How do we do this? So they came like every Monday, like 1.30 to 2.30 every week. And they learned how you know, to eat better, how to, what, to, what's the difference between a fruit and a vegetable? How to read labels? because I myself didn't even know that reading labels was so important until Ms. Schneider showed and went through it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. So I have so much to say that it's way too long, but I just wanna say that these products are wonderful for the students, for the families. Um, and I hope, we hope that in the near future, UF, uh, we'll bring to our school the garden program. We would love to have a garden here at our school. I was talking to our science teacher the other day and she's like, yes, she would love to try it out. So please Tice, sign me up for your garden program. And I thank you for all you have done. Thank you. Hold on one second, Yasmin, they have a question. Yes. So you should tell them what Dean Darling just did for you. Oh my gosh, how do you know? <laughs> Who is this? Who is this? It's Susie Hassett. Okay, yes, Dean Darling. Last year, all started it because, you know, because of COVID, we are not allowed to have people in the building. We can do nothing really. So one of our uh, Title One events, uh, we were like brainstorming with my boss. I say my boss, which is my uh, um, school principal and assistant principal. They're both wonderful. I love them. I love them. They say, well, why don't we contact Dean Darling and see if they can do something, if they can come to us and, you know, we show them, you know, the school and see if they can provide anything that they have for science for our kids. So they came last year for a week. Now this year, they've been here for a month. Wow. Teaching science to our school, to ourselves, like to me, I'm like, oh my God, so much to offer. They just donated over $15,000 to our kids, to our families, meals for Thanksgiving, like a gift card with all the stuff in the cans, all the goodies that goes in the back for the families, 435 families and ourselves, even the staff, are being blessed because of them. We are so thankful to have Dean Darling in here with us. Um, it's beyond words I can express our gratitude. That's only the tip of the ice because I've already been out to consult. We're putting gardens in at your school. It's already in the plans. Dean Darling also is the reason I have John Bailey and Shelby Festa on my team 
there to support other initiatives in the county and take students to Ding Darling. So we're not only yes. going to be taking your students there, we're going to be coming there to make yes. sure. Yes, we are thankful. We are blessed. We are so, so blessed. And I'm like, I cannot believe this, but it's happening. Yes. They're going to help us put in, they're calling them pocket refuges. So some okay. of them gardens, but you're also going to get some vegetable gardens. So they're providing that for, I think it's going to be eight schools this year. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. Beautiful. Wonderful. We are so blessed. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Thank you all. And this person, this Zumba person, that's who we need to connect in for Fit Lab. Fit Lab, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we have now we have Angela from the Community Partnership Schools, and uh, we have we have had a long relationship with Parkway Park Elementary. We have been there for years, teaching and doing some good things with the students and their families. But this year. We uh, had a different relationship with Parkland Park. We are still there. But this time through the community um, school partnership. And we have here Angela. And uh, Angela, please um, unmute yourself. And if you can share with us how have been your experience working with the Family Nutrition Program. Good morning. Can you guys hear me OK? Yes, here, OK. Okay, good morning, good morning. I have to jump off quickly. We just got a donation of turkeys here where we're serving the families, but I just wanted to talk about our partnership with Janice and the IFAS program. The staff and the students, they really love this program and it's hard to get middle schoolers engaged in almost anything that's not um, that does not involve electronics, but they look forward to this class and some of the hands on activities that um, Janice provides really gets them engaged and we even had some students say they wish that they could serve the food in the cafeteria that they make with Janice. So because of this class is they're making um, healthier choices when it comes to food. They stop by our CPS office and share some of the things that they learned or something that they did at home outside of the classroom. So this is one of our favorite partnerships. And um, as most of you probably know, we started with Janice over at the elementary school and then moved into Fort Myers Middle. So it was an easy win just to uh, insert her into the schedule here because the curriculum is already there. We know the target audience. So it's very, it's a very easy win, and it's I cannot tell you how seamless it is perhaps to have Janice come on campus and insert her into the class. So we um, look forward to growing this partnership. We are actually looking for funding right now to move into the high school level. So we will definitely, she's one of our go-to folks. She supports us in any way um, and with anything that we have on campus, not just the classrooms, but our family engagement opportunities. Um, when we have open house, she's here doing demonstrations. So um, like I said, this is a great partnership and we look forward to partnering even more with our as our program grows with the uh, Lee County Schools. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you, thank you so much. Yes, for your You're welcome. Okay, so uh, this is well, just a couple of examples of how um, nutrition education can be easily incorporated into the classroom. Sometimes when we go to school, teacher says, "No, we are busy. We don't know how how to incorporate this into our schedule. They're busy the schedule." But definitely, uh, based on the fact that everything that we teach is evidence based, it's for the teachers really easy to incorporate nutrition education. Okay, so um, now let's talk about policy systems and environmental changes because we we uh, not only go into the classrooms or uh, outside the garden to teach, we do a little bit more uh, to support our school environment. And uh, we want to um, we want you to watch this video, and then after the video, I'm gonna let um, Kelly and Kathleen to uh, continue with the presentation. Give us just a second mm -hmm. so we can make sure we're lined up on the yes. video. Oh, uh, go back one. Yep, and you'll have to. Um, here, I got, I got you. <laughs> maybe. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe. Let me see. Right here, and then present, and then uh, what slide number is that? No, you're going back. You need to. Uh, 
Uh, well, no, I'm going. There we go. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. So if you want to hit that, and we'll hit this one, and hopefully not have a major clash of noise. Can you make sure that they can. Can you guys hear? Yeah, they're gonna get it. Through. There, we're sharing, I think so. You're good. You're okay. perfect. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and so in that example of um what that came to Minnesota, and obviously we're not the same, we're doing Florida Stamp Education. Um, Kathleen and I would be the eggplant and the summer squash, Aggie and Sally, um, supporting the the professionals that work with the students. Um, that work with the community members um, through trainings and technical assistance and supplies and things like that. And so we're going to share about our specific focus areas in Florida and what we do um, in Lake County. And then we're also regional staff. So we work in Charlotte and Collier as well doing similar things. So I mean, you already heard all about this amazing farm to school efforts um, from Susie, but just to reiterate and to share that I I help with that and um, kind of am on the background helping to facilitate some of that work. Um, and Farm to School broadly includes school gardens, um, local procurement, and um, agriculture and nutrition education. So bringing all of those components into the school setting, um, you know, increases the connection that students have with their food and makes them more likely to eat and enjoy those healthier options and live healthier lifestyles. 
and think about some of those environmental components that Susie mentioned. So, um, and that sense I support with um, curriculum at some school gardens, particularly at Island Coast High School, and hopefully others in the future. Um, and, uh, you know, buying from local farms for school meals, um, supporting with the Florida Crunch event, which we'll hear more about from Amy later. Um, and supporting school gardens. And really, my, my hope and what I have seen happen so far is a growing collaboration between different departments in the school district um, with environmental ed and nutrition services and CPE and maybe some of you um, to, to help make this even better and, and bigger than what we could ever accomplish alone. So, like I said, that's what gets me really excited about all of this. And, um, you know, so let's come to student spaces when they're finding a sweet potato or tasting a piece of lettuce and getting excited about vegetables is really awesome. So for the specific types of school garden support that I provide, you already heard about kind of the district-wide in-person training from Susie that we did in the kickoff event and there will hopefully be an event this spring and the school garden leadership training, which is the statewide virtual training. Um, and then I also provide kind of direct support for a limited number of schools um, based on our, our funding availability and the amount of time that we have to work. So that includes one-on-one -on -one consultations with school garden leaders and free materials. So purchasing soil and seeds and that sort of thing. And I have you on my list, Ty. So <laughs> we'll be talking in spring. So they don't need seeds. No <laughs> um, so, so in any case, I, I um, am, I'm already supporting six schools this school year, so I will work on accepting new schools for direct support in the following year. And that is the direct support that I provide. All right. So to keep completing the whole puzzle of what our program, the support our, our program provides to the school, so we, we have learned like how the educational portion is so important so the kids and the parents get access to that knowledge to start making those good decisions about the food and the physical activity. And then also in the food system side, we also try to support our partners in making sure that they access to quality food, especially from local growers, right? So once the food is in the school, well, what we want to make sure that the kids actually eat the food, right? So, and that's when I come to the, when I come to the puzzle to make sure that they eat the food and they get those health outcomes that we are pursuing, right? So, because it's not nutrition until it's eaten. So, um, the way we do that in our program is we use the Smart and Lunch Room movement. This is one of the, it's a research-based strategy this, uh, designed by Cornell University. And the Smart and Lunch Room is just a series of strategies that are low cost or free and they help to nudge the students to make better food selections and consumption and consume that food. So that's that's what a smart lunch room is. And the way we actually put that in place and implement those strategies is by following this kind of framework, right? So we come to the school, we've been working with Amy to implement these strategies in the school this, starting this school year. So when we, the plan is to go out in the cafeterias, each cafeteria in this school district, we want to access the cafeterias and use the smart lunch room, a smart lunch room scorecard and see how, what practices they already have in place and what there is opportunity to improve, right? And, and have, we have, the scorecard has 60 different strategies that can be implemented really easy. They are free and some of them are really low cost and there are simple strategies to implement. So once the assessment is done, so we proceed to do the action planning. Okay, so we identify how we're doing, where is this room for opportunity? So how we can plan ahead and see ourselves making or implementing these strategies in the future. And then the implementation follows is all the getting the resources, we're letting play, testing and see, trying how, how that, those things work. And eventually evaluate it and see what how the change has actually impacted the behavior of the student because that's the ultimate goal. We want to see those changes happening in creating this healthier environment in the cafeteria in the schools all over the district. So and everything again ties together. So we also been collaborating with Amy um, in providing consultation and recommendations to update the school district wellness policy. 
So the, the school wellness policy is the document that sets the foundation on how things are doing in the in the school district in terms of nutrition promotion and school um, meals and nutrition education. So we um, revised the document and provided some um, suggestions on how to incorporate these management room strategies, also the farm to school initiative and the school <coughs> gardens to support the, the implementation in the whole school district. So we can also we can also see a systemic change in the long term. And that would add the piece of sustainability and make sure that that's the way that we operate and we impact the community in a greater level. So there is a lot of opportunity to continue um, doing this work in different levels. So we go from the individual when we do the nutrition education portion and do the classes, and we go through the school district to kind of like have a bigger impact that if we create this policy or it is approved, right, it, it actually impacts the community in a greater level. So that's on a nutshell, more or less what I, how I come to the puzzle and the way that I'm also been supporting the school district. So if you have any questions or want to learn more about this, I'm happy to do that. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathleen. Okay, so we're um, healthy eating lab and healthy kids lab collaboration. So how have you, have we all uh, have, um, have you all have seen so far we have many resources that definitely can support uh, keeping this project alive. And uh, we have been, been brainstorming some ideas. How uh, is that the family nutrition program can support and fill the gap that the school district has to right now with this equipment. So we said, well, any school-based event, like a family night, like a science night, um, the STEM task, we have participated before uh, with the STEM tactic uh, day of discovery. Career day, um, at open houses, uh, or uh, because we teach period, at the end of the period, we can do like a kind of graduation ceremony and we can bring the healthy kids lab or the healthy living lab to the school that day. Any community event, because uh, you know, we understand now that the school district not only wants this equipment to be in the school, we can be out in the community attracting more people. Well, any community event, when where the county and students are involved. So we can be there with a healthy eating lab or a healthy kids lab. Um, we had, um, we were brainstorming an idea of transforming the healthy kids lab, uh, thinking that the word fitness is not only, uh, it, it, the meaning is not only being in routine, it's, it's well being in general, right? So what about if we transform the healthy eating lab into a virtual grocery store? We can provide the students with a recipe and say, okay, you will go to the grocery store, you will buy the ingredients, the best ingredients for this recipe. And they can go inside the healthy kids lab and they wait when they are out with their ingredients. A nutrition educator from the SAT, it can be out, out, out with a food panel so they can prepare the recipe and taste the recipe. Um, after school programs, because our students are everywhere, so, um, it, uh, during after hours, uh, after school hours, we can also provide some collaboration. During summer, summer camp and um, summer meal site, we have done that before uh, with FNS. Uh, very successful. What they are distributing the food, we are there uh, doing our nutrition session. So these are some of the ideas we have said. The sky is the limit. Uh, probably more ideas will come. But um, I just want to finish my our presentation. Oh, sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Our presentation with this quote, when you need to innovate, you need collaboration. And that's why we are here. And um, uh, we hope that this proposal um, um, uh, is, is something that uh, the school district could consider. And uh, just um, to let you know that FNP is here to support any of the projects that the school district may have. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so that leaves Amy. Yeah, I'll be quick. I just want to. We're going to try to pull up. Wrap the, it up with a video. You on get the up first there. event we you had recently oh. with our Florida Crunch event. We did at three elementary schools. I feel like I was able to say the same thing. We did it at um, Edison Park Elementary, North Fort Myer Academy of the Arts, and Orangewood Elementary. We brought the lettuce in that was grown at Island Coast Gardens. 
and together. And we are um, we also did a naming contest because we want to brand this lettuce at these schools because they're going to be use it for the rest of the year. So it's going to be like it wasn't just a one time event. We crunch lettuce and you never see it again. They're going to see it the rest of the year. It's going to be on their menu. So we had three um, winners. They got an iPad. Um, the family nutrition program is going to make signage for their schools. We're going to call the lettuce that name on their menu and just kind of make a big deal out of it. So like they both said, this is just the beginning. I am very excited because it's, I've been here four years. The first two years were very different than the past two years. But <laughs> COVID has, in a lot of ways, what seemed not good has turned out to be even mm -hmm. better. So you know, I think in a lot of ways, the system has to completely break down in order for it to be rebuilt. So I feel like it's going to be better than ever. But thank you, Alicia, for not letting these, um, all of these resources just complete. It was her genius go. idea for this collaboration and it was so smart. So I just want to show a video of the three crunch events we did all together in collaboration and it's really coming full circle. And like Andrea said, it can Welcome to Crunch Week. We wanted to do Crunch Week to highlight locally grown produce right in our students' backyard, but we went a step further and got locally grown produce from a local high school. So this Crunch event is extra special to us because our students will be crunching romaine lettuce grown at a High school in their same county by students just like them. See, how's October is National Farm to School Month. We definitely wanted to highlight the produce grown in our county. And we also want to educate students on where their food is grown, why it's important to eat this food. And so we are sending every student home with a recipe card, hopefully, so they can incorporate this produce into their diet at home and also maybe start a garden of their own. With districts across the country facing shortages and emerging supply chain. We are so happy that we have these school gardens around our district, and we are going to be able to, for the rest of this year, provide up to five schools with romaine lettuce grown at one of our very own high schools. So any way that we can get food to our students this year is just a win-win for everyone. In addition to our Farm to School Month, we have other initiatives in Lee County where we try to focus each day on having at least one product from Florida on our trays. Our milk, our yogurt comes straight from Florida. Our green beans, our corn cobbets are grown at a local farm in Florida. So we try to incorporate it throughout the year in a variety of ways so that students are exposed to these items. And when I say the supply chain is broken this year, it is not a joke. And if you're not really involved with ordering things and receiving it, it is bad out there right now. And it's only going to get worse for a while. They don't even expect to see improvement until 2023. There's no truck drivers. Um, we are we are still getting food. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's just may not be what's on the menu. But to be able to do something like this and provide these schools, even just five of them with this lettuce, and it's nothing like the protein you buy in the store. I mean, it is huge heads of lettuce. So just to be able to get it to at least these five schools this year is, is just a help and it's a start. And like they said, if we replicate this um, hydroponic, aquaponic system at other schools, it can only get bigger. And for a school district to be able to do this right now is very progressive so we're kind of um paving the way for some we're already getting calls from other districts and community partners like what how can we help you know so anyway i just want to thank all of you guys i'm very excited to be able to do this and if anyone has any questions about anything feel free to reach out um thank you Awesome. Thank you very much. Say that one more time. Oh, yeah. Yep. She's, she's coming up. Oh, I got big news for Wally. <laughs> okay. Thank you um, for all of those of you that, um, um, that contributed to, you can stop sharing actually, um, to this collaboration. Like mm -hmm. I said uh, a minute ago, I, uh, I, I'm just a human Lego. I just connect people that, uh, you know, I, I 
when I found out that the healthy living fit labs were kind of being done away with, I just started thinking, what can we do? So connecting all those together. Um, I mean, how often do you see a child that age smiling like that over a piece of lettuce, right? <laughs> so we, we want to um, do this and as part of our comprehensive um, K through 12 comprehensive health education policy. This just to me was a no brainer. Um, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and do a real quick um, comprehensive health ed update. Um, we did send the letter of support. It was sent um, with the letter from Ms. Fisher um, a few, several weeks ago uh, to the governor, uh, the, the uh, commissioner of education and all of our local representatives. So we're always have our fingers crossed for that. Um, as far as health education district wise, um, we have kind of amped up our opt out letter um, because there is statute allowing parents to take their, their students out of any um, sexuality education or disease education. So um, we made that a little bit more detailed. That's gone out to all the schools and are being distributed in addition to our general um, opt out um, at the district website. Um, I do want to mention we're still trying to recruit for Drug House Odyssey fifth grade classes. Uh, Drug House Odyssey will be February the 8th, 9th, and 10th Civic Center. Uh, I know that um, Mary Lynn Rodriguez uh, is handling getting that information out to principals uh, to try to encourage those, um, those schools to participate. And uh, we have a new uh, assistant director for health services. This is Wally Sloan. Wally, would you like to just say hi and say, <laughs> hi, look at me. This is me and this is my background. Or you can just hi, sit there and smile. Good morning. Um, I'm excited to be here. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been with the district actually for about seven years now. I was a school nurse um, this entire time. Um, and then this opportunity opened up. Um, I know that um, I, I didn't get much of what was going on here with the Fit Lab. I don't know if it's going away. We're trying to bring it back. Um, so you guys will pull me in with that. But I know a couple of years ago, um, I was at Villas Elementary um, and you guys came out. My daughters were there. They absolutely loved it. One of my daughters loved lettuce. Um, she will only, like, she wants to go to Zaxby's all the time just to have her chicken salad. My other daughter, <laughs> she's nothing healthy. Okay, not at all. Um, but this is a really great program. Um, the food shortage is a real thing, um, you know, so we're trying to work out ways, you know, just to better serve our students and our community. So however we can help you guys, let us know. Um, I'm jumping in. This is my second day. Um, so <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> but I'm, I'm here to just make everything um, as best as we can to serve our entire community. So thank you. Thank you, Wally, and welcome. We're, we're so glad to have you. Um, we skipped Mary because Mary emailed me that she was going to be a little bit behind. She's, you know, four women. Uh, I, I don't even try to even look at her schedule, much less follow her schedule. So, Mary, do you have uh, any board updates or any just happy things to talk about? We're, we're Healthy Food Steering Committee, our conference room. So I'm sorry that we were meeting together because the conversation was focused on uh, nutrition, and physical exercise, health. So, and, and I didn't hear the word SEX mentioned once in either of these presentations. So I hope we can uh, uh, put uh, some of our um, fears that are out there to rest. I think this is an amazing partnership and, and I'm going to um, ask to have this shared not only with the board, I think we need to share this whole idea and concept with our legislative delegation and I, I'll work with Leisha to do that. I have to thank Leisha for I don't know it's been like nine or ten years that she has been helping me as a board member advocate for comprehensive health education. And that was such a big part of the conversation with their with different community representatives at this Healthy League meeting this morning. 
So I think that we need to really try to um, get the word out because I don't, I don't think that most people understand exactly what you all are doing. And, and this, this collaboration and partnership, and I know when Lisha found out that the Healthy Living Lab and um, was about to be uh, put into storage, she sprung right into action. And I, you know, I, I support that. Um, the rest of the board supports that. So I'm gonna ask if we can share some of this information maybe in a shorter presentation to the board. <laughs> no, just because, because of the way it is, and we you know, do have a, a healthy schedule. So, um, I, I mean, I really don't know what else to say, except that this conversation happening here and then happening right down the hall in another room with another group shows that we do need to increase our, our networking and our collaborations because we're talking about the same thing and doing what needs to be done. You guys presented something here that was so comprehensive and it was an answer to an activity that we did identifying what the needs are. So I'm thinking, oh, you could have answered all those questions right then and there. So I really, you know, I thank you for what you're doing and I'm excited about this. I, I really appreciate the um, support from, uh, from Shaq for the legislative priorities, because that's one way we're gonna get more support and help is if they see the value in what we are able to do that has such an impact on the entire community. So I think that's, I've said enough today, but thank you all and Leisha especially. Um, I remember back to the before the evening fell Uh, do we have anyone else who has something for good of the order? Kathy. I'm just going to hear real fast that provincial services is not going to be going out. Um, some of the counselors, elementary and middle school counselors, take them, um, take their schools, um, so that in person meetings, a lot of people were on the Zoom in, so we need to get those out to schools. So those will be going up to the middle and high and um, elementary school for them to display in their office. That's our initiative about getting parents getting involved and talking to the kids um, about the drugs and that type of thing. The other thing that um, just went out Friday are um, prevention, uh, North Project prevention posters, uh, not posters, folders. These are going out to all fifth, uh, seventh, and ninth graders. We have our a social learning message that if you're not using drugs, you're in the majority, and also some healthy habits for teens. Um, so those got ponied out on Friday. So they're making their way to all fifth, seventh, and ninth grade classes. Um, the student designed a folder that for non private poster contest. The winning. Getting a little stuff out to the schools and then the students' hands. Just that. So that's it. Amy. chicken, pork, um, we can get the peanut butter. We have a meeting with Charles Bradley and you, um, I think November 30th to get an allergy management plan in place. Again, there's nine top allergens right now. We're not banning them all. There's no reason now. I know peanuts have that stigma from a long time ago, but there's nine now. If we banned them all, we basically have a menu. So peanut butter in January, we'll be back in our school. And there's a lot of fear, and we have a lot of research, and I know that some of them are not really not, and we're like, oh, that's you know, So there is some fear, 
And I know really have, we haven't been have, had to pay close attention to it before because the students coming through the lines, but we're going to do everything on our end. We just want everyone to um, know about this and kind of get ready to be on board with this. And that is one. Anything else for good of the cause or possibly from uh, those of you that are Zooming? I didn't see any questions. Uh, I don't think I missed any questions that came in. Uh, we did run over. I apologize. Um, this was a technical challenge for us today, but I, I, I'm. I can promise it's not going to get any better. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask that we get put into a room that the 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 laptop that the Zoom is going through is also the laptop mm -hmm. that controls this because this is a computer lab. Um, it's a, uh, it's been, mm. so anyway, but we managed to get it done and I thank everybody for coming. Um, we will be having our next meeting on February 10th, which will also be a face-to-face -face meeting, but if it's scheduled in this room, don't be surprised if you don't get an email saying this, the meeting location <laughs> has been moved, but we will, we will see what we can do. So again, thanks everybody for coming. Those of you that- Thank you. Thank you so much and, uh, everybody have a great day. Thank you. And if we do it in this room,